In this video, I'll give you a quick overview on how to set up and use your new analog discovery. I'll show you how to download and install the software that controls the analog discovery, and I'll show you a few of the discovery's basic features as well. The Analog Discovery Kit is a low-cost, portable, hands-on learning platform that can help you design and test analog and digital circuits. It can measure and record many types of signals, and it can also produce signals as well. This means that you can both stimulate circuits and observe their behaviors. And the best part is that with the Analog Discovery, you'll be able to do this all wherever you want. In a lab, at home, at a coffee shop, anywhere you have access to a PC. When you receive your Analog Discovery Kit, it will include the Analog Discovery, a USB cable, a detachable flywire cable, and a package of mail-to-mail -mail connectors. You'll notice that your Analog Discovery has a USB port and an audio jack on one end and the main flywire connector on the other. Your Analog Discovery is controlled by the free waveform software which is compatible with all versions of Windows. You can download waveforms from Digilent's website. Once waveforms is installed, connect your analog discovery to your PC using the provided USB cable. Now, open the waveform software. If your analog discovery is properly connected to your PC, you should see a display which indicates that the software is configuring device, and then the main waveforms window will be displayed. If, for some reason, the analog discovery is not properly connected to your PC, you'll get a message saying that no supported device is connected. Check the USB connectors, make sure they are properly seated, and click on OK. Once the software successfully detects an analog discovery, you'll see a serial number appear in the Device Manager window. Click on Select to configure the device. It doesn't really matter if you connect your discovery before or after starting waveforms. If waveforms is already running when you plug in your analog discovery, you'll just be prompted to connect. Now, it's possible to use the waveform software without the analog discovery being connected. If you want to do this, click OK, make sure Demo Discovery is highlighted, and click Select. Waveforms will then start up in a demo mode. This mode allows you to explore the software's features. At this point, you should have the home screen of waveforms displayed on your PC. You will see several tools grouped in two categories, digital and analog. For now, we'll only talk about the analog tools. There are three of these, Voltage, Scope, and Arbitrary Waveform Generator, also called AWG. With the Voltage tool, you'll be able to control the Discovery's two power supplies using simple on-off buttons. The Scope instrument is used to measure voltage differences and has most of the capabilities of a professional lab oscilloscope. Most importantly, you'll be able to gather statistical data such as frequency, amplitude, and period about the signals recorded. The scope instrument, by the way, also provides a number of capabilities that are very rare in professional lab oscilloscopes. Now, let's familiarize ourselves with the scope tool's interface. In the top left, you'll see there's a single acquisition and a continuous acquisition button. To the right of the acquisition controls, you'll find the trigger options. The channel controls are located on the right side of your screen. Within these controls, you can set the channel offset and range. This adjusts the y-axis scale and offset, which you can also do by clicking and dragging the y-axis. Finally, you'll notice the time controls in the top right corner. With these controls, you'll be able to set and adjust the time position and base, which adjusts the x-axis scale and offset. Again, you can also adjust these by dragging the x-axis. Now let's move on to the AWG. The AWG is used to output a user-defined signal. This signal is usually periodic. Within the AWG, you'll notice the following controls. The Select Channels button provides the user with a drop-down menu for selecting which channels to activate. The Run All button turns the selected channels of waveform generator on, which causes the specified voltage waveform to be applied to the analog discovery terminals. The Run AWG1 or Run AWG2 buttons turn on only either channel 1 or channel 2 of the waveform generator. By default, the waveform generator displays a number of common signal types to create. The overall shape of the signal is indicated by the icons. 
There are a lot of other options for creating signals, by the way. The frequency, amplitude, and offset columns modify certain characteristics about the selected wave. Now I'd like to make a couple of quick comments. For safety's sake, when modifying circuits and connections that are being utilized by the analog discovery, make sure that all power is turned off before touching any of the components. Hopefully, you have a strong desire to play around with the controls on all of the instruments. This is a good thing, but some new users are a bit squeamish about doing this since some of the controls can appear rather complicated. However, it's almost impossible to damage your analog discovery. Also, you can't do anything that can't be undone. If you lose track of what you've done or where you are, just select Settings on the menu bar and click on Load Defaults. This returns the instrument to the default settings that existed when the device left the factory, and you can start playing again from scratch. Finally, let's perform a quick functional test to give you a warm feeling that your analog discovery is working. We'll be generating a sinusoidal signal with the WaveGen instrument, and then we'll use the oscilloscope to measure that signal. Assuming that you have waveforms opened and the analog discovery connected to your PC, let's connect channel 1 of the waveform generator, the yellow wire, to the positive terminal of channel 1 of the oscilloscope, the orange wire. Since both of these connectors are female, we'll need to use one of our male-to-male -male connectors to make this connection. To make a complete circuit, we'll also connect the negative terminal of channel 1 of the oscilloscope, the orange wire with the white stripe, to any of the ground terminals, any of the black wires. Now we've made all the necessary physical connections for our test. Any signal we create using channel 1 of the waveform generator will be provided to the oscilloscope. Now we need to turn on the waveform generator and the oscilloscope. To do this, open both the scope and AWG if they aren't already open. This demonstration is geared toward the instruments being in their default settings. So, if you've been playing with the controls, reload the default settings on both instruments. In our test, we'll use the AWG to apply a 1 kHz sinusoidal signal to the oscilloscope. Select the sinusoidal signal icon, if it isn't already selected, and change the frequency to 1 kHz. Then press Run AWG1. Now the AWG is creating a 1 kHz sine wave. To measure the signal, go to the scope screen and press Run. Once you see the wave in the scope window, you'll know that your device is working correctly. Try playing around with the frequency and amplitude in the waveform generator and note the effect in the oscilloscope window. If you have some headphones, you can plug them into the headphone jack and listen to the signal you're creating while displaying it visually. Also, try changing the signal type and the amplitude. To learn more about what the analog discovery has to offer, check out Digilance website. Good luck!